So we have about one hour left in the endocrine section. Um, so we're going to spend most of that time talking about diabetes. So the classification of diabetes, uh, I think we all know about type 2 diabetes. That's driven by obesity primarily, which leads to insulin resistance and progressive beta cell uh, deficits. Um, type 1 di diabetes is an absolute insulin deficiency, usually autoimmune. Um, LADA is a form of type 1 diabetes. So kind of think about those in the same category. So LADA stands for latent autoimmune diabetes of adulthood. Um, it's the same physiology. It's autoimmune. Um, same antibodies that are positive as type 1. The big difference is the degree of progression. So typically LADA will start out looking like a type 2 diabetic. So they won't be on insulin. Um, they'll have some hyperglycemia. They're usually able to maintain with just oral medications or non-insulin therapy. And then suddenly over time, their glycemic control gradually worsens. So if you, if you have a patient who doesn't have the characteristic findings of insulin resistance, you know, central obesity, acanthosis, et cetera, uh, think about LADA. And the, the diagnosis is made by checking a, a GID antibody. Monogenic diabetes. So this was formerly known as MODI, uh, maturity onset diabetes of the young. Um, there have now been about 50 different genes, uh, at least, and they're discovering more and more. Uh, that, that cause uh, her this hereditary form of diabetes. So most of these are autosomal dominant. Um, these patients will present usually at a younger age. So similar to type 1, they won't have a lot of times the signs of insulin resistance. Um, they have GAD antibodies, which are negative, um, and they usually will have a strong family history. Because of the inheritance pattern, they're going to have like multiple family members on their dad's side that have have quote, type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes at a young age. Um, so that is going to be the hint on a test question uh, if you get a monogenic diabetes question. Um, these are all treated differently depending on what uh, mutation you have. Uh, some of them are actually don't require any therapy, just dietary modification. So there are genetic panels you can order now if you suspect one of these to uh, detect the, the abnormality. There are some other forms of diabetes as well, so CF-related diabetes, cystic fibrosis, um, pancreatitis-associated diabetes. Um, don't need to worry as much about those. If you're going to get a test question on classification, it's probably going to be one of the four we discussed. All right, so we have our first audience response question. Diabetes, a 36-year-old woman is concerned about developing diabetes as her mother was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at the same age. She is asymptomatic. She does not smoke. Blood pressure is 134 over 75. Her weight is 190 pounds with a BMI of 34. What is the best screening method? A, fasting glucose. B, anti-islet cell antibodies. C, random blood sugar. Or D, no screening is indicated. All right, so the correct answer was our fasting glucose, and most of us got that right. So good. So fasting glucose is a perfectly reasonable screening method for, for diabetes. Um, you could also check a hemoglobin A1C or an oral glucose tolerance test. Those are all uh, uh, effective screening techniques. Um, random blood sugar is not always going to be elevated, so the high chance of false negative, you know, especially if it's a fasting blood sugar, you may not detect diabetes. Um, and this patient should be screened because she is obese, 